Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. I'm happy to have uh, one of my sponsors on, a brand new sponsor, well, a former sponsor that's a new sponsor again uh, in Amex Exploration. And uh, I have Victor Cantore and uh, Aaron Stone on uh, to talk about the uh, maiden resource e estimate that they put out. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today. Great, thanks, thanks for thanks for having us on. And uh, and Alan, uh, uh, unfortunately, with the with the regulators, we had to. It's not a maiden resource because there was a there was a resource that was put put in there in uh, two thousand nine. Yeah, of just a Gratien zone, 69,000 uh, 69, ounces. So uh, they, okay, okay. So we did, we did, we did put it in there. So we'll, we'll call it's still an MRE. It's a mineral resource estimate. Unfortunately, okay. it's just not a made. Not that it makes a difference. It's a uh, not that it makes much of a difference. So uh, it's uh, yeah. Well, so, um, as is often the case when you put out a maiden or mineral resource estimate, yeah. um, uh, the market uh, can get pretty uh, uh, anticipating a lot bigger number uh, than what originally gets put into it. But, you know, often, as I was mentioning to Aaron, um, people look at headlines and they don't look at the depth of the news releases. Uh, and this happens across the board. I see it in economics all the time. You know, the headline numbers were employment's great in the U.S. and, uh, you know, and the economy's strong. And then you look at the depth of the, the actual what's happening in the jobs numbers in the economy, and it's getting worse. And uh, so, um, you know, that's often the case that I see when a resource is put out is that everybody's anticipating a much bigger number and they look at that number and they don't look below that number. And yeah. for me, what I saw was a well-constrained uh, resource. Oftentimes in resources, there are lots of arm waving and therefore those resources never get, or sometimes never, often many, many years before they get economics thrown around them because they are so arm waving in nature. The fact that you guys used a constraint number uh, and, and really had a tight resource is indicative of that you, while the ink is drying on your resource estimate, you're gonna be putting economics around it. And that rarely ever happens. Did you have some comments on those, uh, either one of you? Yeah, I think you're exactly right on the point there, Alan. The you know we we could have put out a, an unconstrained number, um, and and we would have had a lot more ounces there. But the fact that we've got you know a constrained number of ounces here within the within the pits and and underground, and the fact that we're moving forward with these ounces straight into a PEA, I think speaks volumes about the quality of the ounces that we have here at the Perón project. The fact that we're moving so quickly from a resource estimate to a PEA in only a roughly two month turnaround time, um, you don't see that fairly often um, in the industry. To a company that wants to put the economics around the around the resource so quickly, so while perhaps um, while perhaps the 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 number isn't as high as people were expecting, it's really the quality of the ounces here um, that we're focusing on um, rather than the quantity. And we believe that if you, obviously, especially looking at the high grade zone and the the grams per ton you've got in the high grade zone there, it's a it's a world class asset just in itself. So, um, and all of all of our zones of the project they all remain open. So, by no stretch of the imagination are we obvious said and done here. This is obviously our just our first iteration of the of the resource at Peron. We're just getting started here. All of our zones, including the high grade zone, remain open at depth, but also along strike. There are even portions of the high grade zone that need expansion at surface as well. So we'll continue to to further add ounces uh, here at the project and continue to grow it moving forward. But we do see this uh, as a standalone project with you know when those details come out in the PEA in a couple of months. You throw it to you, Victor. Yeah, that, I mean that's one of the one of the reasons why. Uh, just to repeat what he said is that 
is that that's why we put out a uh, we're we're putting out a um, PA immediately after is to show that it's a it, it'll be an economic mine and um and that's when I think you know most people will realize that it is it is going to be a standalone um, at least we believe that's what you know, with all with all the, with all the waivers. Uh, we do believe it'll show that, and you know it's coming up. It's coming up in sixty days or so. So I'd rather, you know, you know, to your point before, like we're not gonna we're not gonna put out an unconstrained and put out ounces uh, everywhere. You go in as tight as you can. Yeah, all the arm arm waving. Put it in as tight as you can. Show the economics and continue continue building it. You know, when you look at when you look at those tables, like there's a there's a lot of ounces that 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 can be and will you know that can be in the you know added. With more, with more, with more drilling, it can it can grow. But even though we're talking about growing the ounces, it's economic the way it is. It's worth a lot of. It's worth of. In my view, it's worth. In my opinion, it's worth a lot more than than what we're looking at, uh, than what we're looking at right now. And you know, and, and that's why we put it we put it out, and we'll continue putting out quality ounces. Not a you know that saying right? Not all ounces are uh, not all ounces are made the same, right? And that's. You know, yeah, that's a big point that I think that this industry has kind of suffered from for a long time. And this happens from the big companies all the way down to the explorers, is that it's a it has been a question of bigger for the sake of being bigger. It's not the question of bigger bigger for the for quality. And I, I think there's a shift coming in the market or, or in the business where quality is more important than size because you look at some of those takeovers you were around victor uh the takeovers that happened in the mining business from the 2001 to 2011 gold bull market that was all about bigger for the sake of getting bigger and those biggers are still stuck in not being producers that's right that's right and uh, you know, so I I appreciate the qual going for tightness instead of arm waving because it shows reality. And when I look at the reality of a resource estimate, oftentimes the number that is in there is the 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 ounces isn't really as important to me as the cutoff grade and the average grade. And when you look at those two numbers based on the high grade zone and the low, and the open pit targets, you have a very healthy margin between the cutoff grade in both kinds of resources that is quite exceptional. A lot of a lot of gold mine open pits are being mined for a fraction, a third of what your your average grade is. Uh, and uh, and the high grade zone is very high with a big margin between the uh, uh, cutoff and the average grade. Yeah, and, and you know we're we're uh, we're open with uh, further drilling that eventually those numbers will continue getting bigger. And I'm talking about even on even uh, even on grade on the on the high grade zone. Like 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 I'm not a mining engineer, but just think about it. it, it that's it's really, it's really the high grade zone. That's, 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 you know, that's where all the value is. You know, once you sink a ramp in there, if you do sink a ramp in there, you know, you can, you can go access a lot of, a lot of these other ounces that, that would not be economic on its own, but, but because you're already mining, you just, you just start to drift over. Now, again, again, all the waivers, right. I, I'm not a mining engineer, but yeah. you know, when you look at, when you look at it the way it is and you look at the proximity of the, of the, uh, of the Denise zone, it's just speculation, but you know. So we're going to leave it to the to the economic uh, the economic scenarios to to show it when we put out the, when we put out a PA. How and do I you think feel that... about that cutoff to average grade? The comments I made, Aaron. Yeah, so I think the the cutoff grade speaks volumes about the the infrastructure and the location of the project. So we're not, you know so far north in Quebec that we're in the middle of James Bay in the middle of nowhere, right in the heart of the Abitibi. So the, you know, we're envisaging that the CapEx in the, in the economic assessment is going to be very favorable. The fact that we're located in a town, we have, don't have to build camps. We've got electricity right there. The high grade zone itself is located only four kilometers 
from a high voltage power line that actually powers the Casa Barati mine uh, directly to the north of us. So a lot of the infrastructure is already in place. And this is one of the main reasons why um, we're able to use a, a low cutoff grade. So we've got all the workforce there, um, the expertise and, and towns are in place, all the major highways and everything. So um, it's a very, very favorable jurisdiction and, and spot to be in for the project. And the reason that I pay so much attention to those cutoff grades and the average grades is because they start to give you an indication of what the economics are going to look like. When you have a nice tight constrained cutoff grade and there's a big margin to the average grade, it's a rule of thumb that if the cap, the, uh, uh, the uh, cutoff is low, your capex is gonna be low and your uh, OPEX is gonna be low and your free cash flow IRR is gonna be high, which makes for a very rapid uh, return of the CapEx to build the mine. Then after you get beyond that, it's all sort of gravy, which was, I think Victor was trying to uh, portray there. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I, I can't comment on the, uh... I can't really give you much like I'm glad that you that you you said those said those things and and you know it's uh it's it's uh, and I can't agree I can't agree with you more uh we'll we'll see what the we'll see what the real numbers when they when they come out and that's the way you should be re, you know that's the way we should be reporting these uh these resource calculations especially if if you're ready to put out a a economic study immediately uh, immediately after and I think it Another thing that really helps out with the with the capex in this situation is actually located uh, behind Victor's head in his background is the the metallurgy off that we have here um, at the Perón project and specifically in the high grade zone. You can see the 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 large nature of the of the gold grains within the zone. Um, it's not trapped within sulfides, so it's large grains, free gold, extremely easy to recover. So we're actually should be coming out in the economic assessment that will be able to skip out the flotation process, which is already highlighted in the metallurgical results that we've already released um, for the high grade zone is that you just go straight from gravity straight to the cyanide circuit by able to, by being able to skip out the flotation, you're saving a lot of cost on the, on the mill build out there. So that's uh, going to be another extremely favorable thing uh, for the economics of the project also. Yeah, and that brings up a good point. You know, what's the difference between a eighty percent uh, recovery resource and uh, and a ninety some ninety five ninety nine percent recovery? That that's a whole difference in ounces of what you have to report there. Exactly right. Yeah, and even on the the metallurgy work that was done on the balance of our zones as well. So Gratien, Grey Cat, Denise, and teams they all came back above ninety five percent recovery as well. So. Um, we're not losing a lot of gold in the in the milling process. And another thing, you brought it up there, the picture that is behind Victor. Um, yeah. Both, you see very coarse uh, VG there <laughs> and fine grain VG. And <clears throat> this also has an impact on your drilling. For example, what if they cut that core at, at the wrong angle on the picture on the right? how much of that gold then makes it into the assay. And so then that impacts what you can put into your resource estimate. Um, and really when it comes down to it, I often say that there's, a, there's two, two truth machines in mining. One is the small one, which is the drill rig. The other is the big one, which is the, the mine. And when you mine that rock, you get it all. I'd be interested to see some bulk sampling uh, and what the difference is in the grade. And this all comes back to putting constraints on a resource. Um, and, uh, you know, that this is a well-constrained resource and with lots of room to get bigger. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you're, you're right. Right in saying, Alan, that usually when you actually get down there and start mining these things, the grades actually are a lot better than originally thought. So when we when we drill the core as well, we're we're not biased in which side of this core we send to the lab either. So all the core is is um, aligned along its foliation. 
it's uh, it's cut down the line of the foliation. So there's always a chance that you're going to lose lose gold when when cutting the core in half. And because we're not biased, there if you were to sample the other half of the core, you might actually get a better grade out of that size of the core as well. When we, when you increase and that's the drill going to size, impact what goes into your resource? Exactly yes. right. And from what we've seen, when we increase the drill size, so when we did do the metallurgical um, drill testing, that was PQ size drill core instead of our normal holes at NQ size. The grade that we got out of the PQ core was far superior to the NQ core. So the more volume we have, the more material we have to test, usually the better the gold grade. So there's actually a new um, um, assay um method that's i was gonna ask you about it photon assay yes. photon assay yeah there's a lab in valdor uh, msa i believe that are doing it and they actually take the whole it's a new technology and they actually require the whole piece of core um so that's something we're looking at at the moment as well to see if we potentially use this this new technology new method see if we get better gold recoveries out of it because we could we potentially could be looking at even richer stuff than than has been presented today so and that would make its way into a future resource. Exactly right. Well, <laughs> why you're speaking to my heart on this, Aaron, is that I spent a lot of my career in diamonds. And um, when you're looking, for example, a one carat diamond only weighs 0.2 of a gram. Okay. So when you're putting a drill core in a ton of rock, you quite easily can miss that which means that you have to depend on other indicators such as uh, micro diamonds and diamond indicator minerals to give you an idea of what the actual grade is. And then when you go into a bulk sample, you start to see reality. And you just look at some of those nuggets that are in that right hand picture there. Um, you need to get bigger samples to really get a representative grade or as you said, photon assaying, because this is very similar to what you use in a diamond mine where they, they x-ray sort it, that it pumps air when it sees a diamond and it gets all the diamonds. So now you get a representative sample. I hope you guys go to that photon assaying because then none of the gold stays in the box as a cut core, you get to sample it all and get all the gold out of it. Yeah, no, exactly right. Definitely. And are you planning, is that part of the plans going forward is to uh, to use photon assaying to uh, to assess your, your future core or even some of your past core? We're definitely looking at the potential of using of using the technology um, moving forward, and the the amount of uh, backlog that we have uh, at our current lab. If we, we could potentially use two labs side by side to speed up uh, the return in our assay times, you know that that could be more favorable as well. So definitely, uh, definitely something we're looking at, and um, we'll we'll do some studies on it and some trials as well to see if it works. Um, works for the gold that we have at Peron, but I, I personally uh, think it could work out really nicely for us. And when you, you did, got you that did... coarse gold, did... Yeah, that's it. And like we were saying before, once you actually get down there and you're, you're in the mine, so another thing we'll potentially look at over the coming years is the potential of a bulk sample. So, um, you know, we'll, 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 We'll look at per, beginning the permitting and stuff for, for that in the in the background to to give us the 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 flexibility and the optionality to to look at doing that in the future um, if it makes sense. Aaron, I'm going to get back to you on the exploration to what you could do to increase the resource, but I want to talk to Victor because Victor's got a lot of experience in the uh, in the uh, financial side of the business. And um, Victor, you, you follow gold and you follow gold development projects and what's in the pipeline. Um, I, uh, I'd like to talk to you about what's in the pipeline. What's in the pipeline is not enough advanced staged high grade gold projects that look like they could be future mines. And as the price of gold goes up, those will only get more and more dear because there's such a small menu. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, I I believe that you know the high grade the high grade mines with good infrastructure are going to be the first ones are going to be the first ones to get bought or and or developed because those are the ones that are most prof profitable. Just like you were saying before, you're gonna you're gonna end up with the good NPV numbers. You're gonna end up with uh, good IRR numbers, and those are those are those are the projects that end up end up going going first. And what I'm saying, going, it's either you get bought or you get developed, one or one or one one or the other. And you know these producers now, like you're saying, it's getting tight out there. There, you know, some of them have ten years ten years re reserves. They need they need to start slotting in. Uh, they need to start slotting in reserves in there. Um, and there's nothing gonna... out. What's out there for them to to buy? No, that's right. That's right. And you know, going going back to the, the those photon assays, what if we end up using it? What would be interesting is that when when we when we start doing uh, infill infill drilling to uh, to to increase it, you know, to to you know to go from inferred to indicated, that'll be very interesting to see what the grade is when you start putting some holes right in between other ones. Uh, well, the other and advantage to it as well, Victor, is that. Then you can start using your um, your block. You can spread them out because you have a higher confidence that yeah. you're not arm waving. If you That's have right. that more uh, solid data, you That's can right. grow your resource because of what what you pull into it. That's correct. And that's another one of the things about the high grade zone. If you look, uh, take a closer look at the numbers today in this morning's release, is that as we increase in confidence from inferred to indicated to measured, the grade only gets better and better and improves. So I that think doesn't in the, in happen, the, Aaron. Th that's that's right. It's pretty rare in the gold industry that that happens, right? So it only speaks to the the nature of the mineralization in the in the high grade zone and, and its continuous and homogeneous nature. The the tighter the drill spacing gets, the better the grade actually gets. So as we continue to drill the high grade zone, not only expand it, but as Victor said, upgrade it from to continue to upgrade the inferred resource to indicated, the grade just keeps improving. So that is extremely that, favorable. You know, originally, Victor, you know, I started following this company yeah, off your first, first, off your first discovery hole, and what has evolved over time on that high grade zone is something that's quite spectacular. Usually, in these orogenic gold systems, you have very small lenses that uh, that are can be fabulous mines, but you don't get that that extensive uh, continuity of the high grade and even Darian uh, Gabore has written papers about this because of how unique it is in an orogenic gold system to have that kind of continuity yeah yeah that's no, exactly it's, right it's no, no, it, you just don't find it in these orogenic gold systems and so, you know, that speaks to the, the, the drilling more and tightening up and uh, in that high grade zone. Well, if you look at the high grade zone, I mean, it's a it's a it's a mining engineer's uh, dream where, you know, the deposit is like, I don't know, 88, 89, 89 degrees. It's homogenous. The grade you see the, you know, the grace, the grade dispersion, the way the way it is, it's pretty it's pretty. Uh, um, you know, there's not not much guesswork in mining in mining that uh, that uh, project. So, and that's why and that's why again we want to put economics and attach economics around this. Well, when you get an expert like Darian uh, Gabore, who knows these orogenic gold systems very well, writing such bullish papers, like the abstract of one of his papers talks about. You know, this being one of the best grades of orogenic gold systems and its continuity anywhere in the world. Yeah. Uh, he's not a stock promoter. He's a scientist. That's right. Uh, and, and I do believe he's completely independent because I don't believe really <laughs> he only cares. So it's uh, it uh, it speaks it speaks uh, it speaks volumes. Well, you don't have independence. You can look at a paper and tell how 
the independence. These guys put a lot of science into that stuff. They don't just wave their arms and say things. They got all the science to back it up. And some of the zones as well have a, you would have seen in the papers, Alan, do have a volcanogenic flavor to them as well. So there, there is that as well, which, which leads further down the road to, to say that today's resource didn't include any of our VMS deposits um, that exist on the Perron property as well. So today's numbers are just purely the gold that we have on Perron doesn't include at all the QF zone, which is our copper rich um, VMS zone. Um, and we do have some other copper and zinc, even within the Beaupre block in the central polymetallic zone. There's a bit in the um, Donner copper zone, which is further down at depth located right next to the uh, high grade zone. There are some copper numbers in there also. So none of those base metals are, are, are outlined in today's resource. Neither is any of the, the lower silver credits that may exist in some of the ore bodies as well. So potentially something for us to look at in the future. I also. really found that interesting that you've got orogenic gold, you've got VMS gold, the VMS system, and you've got a mix of VMS and, and uh, orogenic. So you've got two styles of mineralization there that are seem to be overlapping or... I, I just think what is driving all that below that, uh, Aaron? Yeah, so at this point in time, it looks like there's a lot of mineralizing, you're not just a one mineralizing event that is in place, the gold here at, here at Peron. There would have been multiple events given why some of the ore bodies have more of a orogenic signature, some have more of a volcanogenic signature, and some have a mixed signature. Even moving even further ahead, our latest discovery at the JT zone um, where we found the, the felsic to intermediate uh, intrusion that contained um, sulfide mineralization along with some lower grade gold in it. Um, more so exciting than the actual ounces that um, we're potentially going to be able to put into the PEA there. Well, you know, potentially there should be a, a lower grade, um, you know, small bulk pit that will go in that area but it's the 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 new geological secrets or secrets uh i don't know if secrets the right word but uh clues that um that dike is starting to lead us down um towards the gold mineralization within the entire Beaupre block is that the felsic intrusion um has a strike of east northeast um, so roughly 80 degree strike. And if you trace a line through the Beaupre block, that lines up exactly perfectly with the Alizé zone, Grey Cat and Gracien. Now this east-northeast orientation is also the exact same orientation as the high grade zone, only 600 meters to the south, which if you trace a line between those lines up perfectly with Denise, the high grade zone and the team zone. So we're thinking that it's kind of early days with this theory still, but us and some of our strategic partners are beginning to get excited about this new theory is that if we can find more of these um, felsic to intermediate intrusions that have come from the volcanic complex intruded up into the um, Beaupre rhyolitic dome, busted it all apart. And that's what was created the structures that put the gold emplacement within the entire block that would geologically make us very similar to what is at windfall which is an intrusion related um, gold system. So obviously with their 7.4 million ounces, if we start to make some geological comparisons, I'm personally quite excited about if we can find more of these um, felsic intrusions along the Western portions of the Beaupre block, trace those without throughout the rhyolite, what does that give us in terms of targeting, um, in terms of looking for other high grade zones that may exist on the Western portions that we still really haven't had a proper look at yet. The drilling out there is still very sparse. So um, definitely a goal of mine is to, to find another one of these high grade zones that may exist out there. And if they are controlled by these felsic intrusions, um, you know, that's that's pretty exciting geologically. Actually, and if you look at... the goosebump factor is <laughs> because, you know, what I've seen from a top down view is you've got all of these zones, like there's nine zones that are all tightly packed right beside each other. 
And that suggests to me that there is, well, the amount in, of the VG in there tells me that this is a high grade, big, powerful mineralizing source down there somewhere. And it shouldn't be too far because you've got all this tight spacing of all these zones. Yeah, no, that's 100% right. And actually, as we start to get deeper in the high-grade zone in the east as well, we're starting to see that they're plunging towards one another also. So that's another you know, huge exploration target for us is the hopefully find with further drilling the marriage of the high-grade zone with Denise and see if there is a super high-grade pocket down there also. Oh, now you're making me think of Red Lake where they went down to 1,000 metres then they hit the bonanza zone and it went down for another couple thousand meters. And in that, <laughs> the coarseness of that gold was like some of the samples from Gold Corp was like half gold and half quartz. Yeah, yeah. You I, know? Did, uh, I did work uh, roughly half a year at the Eliano mine with Neumont. So a lot of the people there worked at uh, Red Lake for a bit as well. And they uh, tell and remember hearing stories about the as you walk down an ore drive and the, the backs of the mine were just gl glittered up all with gold. So pretty, uh, pretty cool stories when you hear about that. Well, at the end of the day, I, I, I've always, since I saw the first drill hole, I've been excited about this project and uh, it's been a great advancement. Victor has put together a great team. Um, you have exceptionally talented people working on the project finding ounces. You brought El Dorado in as a big shareholder. They got to look at all this data because they sign a confidentiality agreement and then they cut a check. So if it's good enough for El Dorado, it's good enough for me, eh, Victor? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that that's really shows confidence uh, that, you know, they, they definitely like the, they definitely like what they saw and they do believe in the, in the future, in the future of this uh, project. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's quite, we're quite busy. We're, we, we are getting a lot of inbound calls of, you know, getting meetings where we have a pretty busy uh, marketing schedule from, uh, from now till the end of the year. Uh, we're actually looking forward to uh, Beaver, to Beaver Creek. And you know when we're when we're going to be sitting down and talking with the uh, you know with with the corporates, um, you know they're they're smart people, right? They're going to be able to see that that we actually put together a pretty good constrained resource that's real and and most likely will be will will, will be mineable. And again, the economics is gonna is gonna show is gonna show it all. It's gonna show and tell it all. Well, at the end of the day, Victor and I'm out there looking for companies all the time. How many? high grade multi million ounce gold deposits are there sitting beside a mining town in a, the best mining jurisdiction in the world quebec um you know you, you, there's just not very many of them and every major mining company has to be paying attention yeah i would uh, i would definitely assume i would definitely assume so yeah, well, I don't see your schedule at Beaver Creek, but I, I bet you you got some good meetings set up at Beaver Creek. Are you guys also going to the Denver one as well, Cold Trail? Oh, not the Den not the Denver. We're gonna, we're going to be at Beaver Creek. Yeah, Beaver Creek. It's uh, been really it's been really good over the years. It's uh, we usually end up with sixty plus uh, with sixty plus meetings, and uh, I'd say uh, probably a third of it is uh, you know a third or a little bit more than a third of it is uh, corporates and. Uh, then, then you have corporates, meaning you know producers. Uh, then you you do have investment funds, uh, some of our shareholders. Uh, so it's yeah, it's pretty, um, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So we'll be able to show and tell, uh, you know, this. Uh, and I'm and I'm glad because now we can actually talk about it and show exactly exactly what it is. Perfect. Well, thank you guys very much. I know it's going to be a busy day because you're doing a webinar uh yeah. for for shareholders as well um yeah. so thanks a lot for coming on and you know i i think there's going to be a lot of great news flow for us to talk about in future uh yeah. interviews and uh thanks a lot on behalf of my uh my viewers because sponsorship helps me put out a lot of content and provide great. this kind of stuff for my audience and 
Uh, I really appreciate your time and uh, for coming on, Victor and Aaron. Well, thanks. Thanks for having us on here. And I'm really glad that we can. Uh, I hope that we are, we, we've properly relayed the message on how good this resource really is. They all. Thanks, Ray. I, I don't care whether it's mining, whether it's economics. People tend to look at a headline and they don't pay attention to digging deeper. Smart money does that. And usually it doesn't take very long before uh, people look deeper into an, uh, the, the news and see uh, very shining lights. And I can say that what I look for in a resource, I'm very impressed with what I see. Great. Well, glad to, glad you see it that way because we definitely we definitely see it that way, and we'll 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 continue putting out uh, uh, positive news. We, you know, although the stock is down today, I do I do view it as a posit as positive news because this proves that this thing will be a a uh, that we believe will be a standalone mine. Well, I'm going to close it on that, Victor, because that was a heck of a way to close it off. And and first of all. Companies a sponsor. I provide content for them, but they don't pay me for my opinion. My opinion is based on 30 years in this business, looking at this sort of stuff. And I am a, I'm a reporter on the industry. I'm always out there looking for good stories to talk about on my shows, whether as a pick or a sponsor. And what I can guarantee you from my experience is that what I said to Victor earlier, how many high grade projects are there that are multi-million ounce targets that are in a the best mining jurisdiction in the world, right beside a mining town uh, and have these, uh, these dynamics of a, of, a, of a mineral resource estimate. Um, I, I can tell you from my experience, I can't find very many of them. If you can find them, please tell me because I'll talk about them on my show. On that note, have a great day and we will talk you. soon.